Uh, I couldn't indulge without you, so I have uh, recently acquired a dozen oysters on the, I'm going to eat on the half shell with my brand new shucking knife. Another five dollar purchase right there. And uh, that's a big boy right there. Oh yeah. You've got to be kidding me. I've had some pretty good oysters in my day, but that thing. Look at that. That's the size of my hand. Well, practically. Uh, a little horseradish on that bad boy. And a little bit of cocktail sauce. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> That's a big one. Absolutely phenomenal. That was perfect. You try not to laugh. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Uh, don't want to tell you. North Carolina is good for a lot of things, and oysters is one of them. Um, it's not oyster season right now, but these things came from not too far away. And uh, I'm going to sit down here and enjoy a dozen of these bad boys. Um, if you've never had oysters on the half shell, you don't know what you're missing. These guys got some strength. Once you cut that roof, I'm trying to be careful because I don't have my glove and I'm making my wife nervous. But once you cut the roof, I mean, once you pop it and you cut that roof, yeah, they open up really easy. And um, I'm telling you what, this is some of the, one of the best treats you'll ever have in your life. After working all day. Describe the difference between the northern oyster and an oyster here. Um, the difference? Cold water. Um, the oysters back home, they're in a colder environment, and when you crack a, a Damascata or a Chesapeake, even a Blue Point, which is Connecticut, uh, New Hampshire oysters are tricky. Well. The only way you can get a New Hampshire oyster is you have to be a resident of New Hampshire to get a, oh, and our beach is only 20 feet, you know, we got 20 feet of ocean frontage in the state, so, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, you got to be a New Hampshire resident, there's no commercial oystering, so the only way you're going to get a New Hampshire oyster is to live in New Hampshire and go get your own, which is cool. But the colder the water, the brinier it tastes. In other words, I've had oysters in Louisiana, uh, Texas, from Galveston, and they have a, they're very good, but they, they have a different taste because they come from brackish water. In a warmer water, these here, um, the water's getting cold, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, they're very good. Uh, what, uh, what, what makes these so good is there's so much meat in there. You know, uh, so if you're making an oyster chowder or if you're making a, uh, just doing oysters on the half shell, oyster Rockefeller, any way you want to prepare it. Me, I like to just pop them and put them down the hatch. They're very, very good. But the warmer the water, uh, you, you just get a different taste. And I'm not saying it's a bad taste, it's just a different taste. Um, and you know, if you ever if you ever pop into a Damascata oyster on ice, it's that that's incredible. I mean, it's a very salty, briny taste. Uh, the texture isn't really any different. Uh, that pretty much stays the same. So, depending on and your, you had it once in 
Colorado. They had a damn Roscado oyster in Colorado, I did, yeah. Which, if you've never been to Colorado, uh, the first thing you want to hit is an oyster bar because they get most of their oysters from damn Roscado, which is probably one of the best oysters in the world. So, anyway, I just want to point out. Is that Jax? Jax, J-A-X, Jax, yeah, let's give them a plug. Boulder, Colorado. Absolutely. A uh, dollar a piece. A buck and oyster. Which Line is out phenomenal. the door. Line out the door. But look at the look at how thick that is. That is a serious oyster right there. That would make anybody proud. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of meat in there. Anyway, um, again, you know, I, I hate to rub it in, but I again, I can't indulge without sharing it with you. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and a little bit of cocktail sauce. We got some Cajun corn going and another good night. What can I say? Uh, except for go get yourself a dozen oysters and start shucking. Couldn't help. Look at that. Absolutely. <coughs> oh, wow. That was for you, Sarge. Sarge Ferrier, Derek, the man who knows his crustaceans. You would love that, brother, trust me. Uh, I'm just going to have to enjoy it without you, what can I say? All right, anyway. Until the next time. <laughs>
when they harvested oysters, they used to uh, put them in like root cellars, if you will, and cover them with wet burlap, and they will actually keep for months um, that way. And you know, a lot of people think that oysters, you've got like a couple of days to eat them, but I personally had them in my refrigerator for three weeks under wet dish towels, and they were fine. Um, in the old times, like I say, they used to, uh, you know, they would keep them in their cellars, root cellars, whatever, for, for months under wet burlap, and they would, they would survive. And they would sell them, you know, a little bit at a time or whatever. And, uh, it's just kind of interesting how, you know, when you talk about the history of the half shell, I mean, this little bugger here has a, we've been, we've been chasing this thing for a long time for, for good reason. It's a great, it's a great treat. Uh, we love eating them and I think we're going to probably do it for a long time. You know, uh, the oyster also goes back as far as Shakespeare. And he was quoted in saying, The world is mine oyster, which I will open with a sword. So last one, down the hatch. Here's to Shakespeare. <laughs>